All right, guys. Had to chime on there. A lot of sports issues coming up down the pike. Um, I'm thinking about starting my sports channel back up. Uh, my sports channel is called Living Room Gangster. You guys can go over there and subscribe if you haven't. Of course, most of you have already subscribed because you subscribe to all my channels. The links to all my channels are in the description box. Um, but Living Room Gangster is the channel that I'm thinking about making my sports channel. Um, so let's give me your feedback on that one. I used to do sports stories every day. You guys know that. All you guys know that. I used to do a hip-hop channel, which was Ock Nation TV, which was hip-hop and celebrity trending topics. This one and my sports channel, um, Living Room Gangster. Every day I used to put videos on all three. Because so much things are happening in the sports again, um... I'm thinking about starting that back. I really am. So let's give me get in the comment section. Tell me if you think if you would support it. I I I I would like to see you know maybe like the the sub count grow over there. I think we got like six thousand subs over there. I'd like to see the sub count grow before I you know started putting videos over there because I want this channel to be more about you know current events, news, um, just things that you know non-sports related but this one right here this I, this stuff never ceases to amaze me um Rachel Nichols now she said some things that a lot of people are calling her racist for and I'm just not seeing racism in her comments I see saltiness, anger. But now we are we at a point in America where white people can't be mad when they lose out on something or something doesn't go their way? Like, she just said, and I'm going to play the whole quote for you, but the, just the, the main point that she said was, if you need to give her more things to do because you are feeling pressure, about your crappy long time record on diversity, which by the way, I know personally from the female side of it, like go for it. Just find it somewhere else. You are not going to find it from me or taking my thing away. What's, what's racist about that? You got a super woke white woman with all the white woke talking points diversity 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 other white people are racist not me though black people have it so rough everything is against black people 24 7 365 they don't have a shot in hell of making anything of themselves because of slavery while being around a bunch of people who graduated from Northwestern and Syracuse mass communication program and a bunch of athletes that make millions and millions of dollars a year. But she still promoted that, even though that's the group of black people around. This is not a woman who was stuck in the ghetto in the trenches. Some Becky with frizzy hair and bad makeup. And a bunch of tattoos. And some biracial kids. This is. A woman that's around. All millionaire black people. 24-7. That's her job. She's either the people she works with. Or the people she covers. All the black people she covers are rich. And she's still promoted. Victimhood. Victimology. Black people need this. The whole world's against them. And now that diversity has come to her doorstep. And she's upset about it. That's human nature. That's not racism. Because if she was if you go if we're gonna call if we're gonna let these wokey wokes call her racist, 
What was she when she was championing your cause? She just didn't want it to affect her. She didn't mind if all the diversity, the quotas and things like that helped black people take jobs from other people or black people um, take spotlight from other people or fringe on other people or, you know, whatever. Or get roles or whatever the heck. Or get jobs in tech, in STEM, in science, in engineering over people with better test scores and better grades and more qualifications. She didn't care that Asian kids who score higher than everybody on the SAT are discriminated against by most major schools, including the Ivy Leagues. She doesn't care that they get docked 350 points on the SATs. And that an Asian kid with a perfect score, and that happens a lot, perfect score in SATs, you line him up with a black kid who got a thousand on the SATs, the college is going to take the black kid with a thousand on the SATs. Rachel Nichols doesn't have a problem with that. But when, when it comes to her having to step aside for this diversity, she has a problem. To me, hey, instead of hosting the NBA Finals, like, why don't you do Darcy's silent reporter job for the NBA Finals? Because guess what that would clear the way for? Uh, for her to do full time. For Maria to do the hosting full time. Yeah. You know. So, I have declined. I don't know what their next move is, but they are feeling pressure because of all of that and um i'm trying to figure out like how to just you know my thing is like i you know i wish marie taylor all the success in the world she covers football she covers basketball if you need her to give her more things to do because you're feeling pressure about your like crappy long time record on diversity which by the way i myself like know personally from the female side of it like go for it just you know find it somewhere else like you're not going to find it with me now, Maria Taylor caught wind of these last year, and she said that she wouldn't, she wouldn't continue to do, to host the show unless Rachel was removed. <laughs> Listen, I like Maria Taylor. She's beautiful. She's tall. You know? rare to see a you know a brown skinned sister in that role you know it's beautiful to see you know a sister she not a damn mulatto <laughs> she's married to a identifiably black man a brother nappy headed brother look at these wedding pictures Be beautiful couple man most of the wokey woke people at ESPN if you're woke, you woke at ESPN, it's almost, if you hear somebody say some woke stuff on ESPN or in the media in general, it's to the point now where you don't even have to ask who they're married to. Once you hear the wokeness, you know they're not married to a black woman. <laughs> like our pal Jalen Rose. He can yell on live TV, arrest the cops that killed Breonna Taylor. He can say the U.S. is afraid to send an all-black team to the Olympics, even though they've done that four times. Not one, not twice, not three, not four. Four times they sent an all-black team to the Olympics. This time they have one white person on the team. This is like the first time in a long time they actually have one white person on the team. And Jalen Rose, a black man, got to get on TV and complain about that. And not only complain, but say the, that America as a country, all of us, 
represent America. We're afraid to send an all-black team to the Olympics. It got very little pushback for that. Gave an apology, rambling apology, in which he didn't apologize. <laughs> and it was over. You think Jalen Rose took one of these sisters, the least married group in America, and made her an honest woman? Nope. He found him a white woman from the Middle East. And don't get me wrong, Molly Karam is fine as frog hair, but nevertheless. And I know you know this guy, Mark Jones. He's the one after George Floyd incident who said that he didn't trust the police escort because, you know, ESPN, these people are constantly escorted by police. P police everywhere they go because, you know, just they're important people. They have police escorts. So after George Floyd, he said he didn't trust his police escort anymore because he thought that they might kill him. <laughs> he literally said that. This guy's been getting a police escort to and from the games from for 25 years. As soon as George Floyd happens, <laughs> all of a sudden he doesn't trust him anymore and he thinks they might kill him. So you, this is why I give Maria Taylor a break. She's wokey woke, 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 woke. But she not gonna show up with a white dude. <laughs> she not gonna tell her that wokey woke crap and then show up with a white dude on her arm and be like, uh, yeah, and what? Which is my thing. You can marry who you want, but like. Damn. Like, you disparaging other people. You talk, calling people coons and you tell, making this, like, other people questioning their blackness, how black they are, because they don't agree with you on a topic. Because <laughs> they think a guy, man, that guy shouldn't have did that. He shouldn't have fought with them cops. What do you think was going to happen? Maria Taylor's going to question whether you're black or not. So at least she got a black dude at home. <laughs> you know, so I'm cool with Maria Taylor more so than the other pundits at ESPN. Even though she's super woke and annoying sometimes. But she's very good at her job. Now her and Rachel Nichols, it's very getting it's very dicey. The, the NBA finals are coming up. The whole world, the eyes of the whole world is gonna be on ESPN. And Maria Taylor's contract expires right before Game 7, if there's a Game 7. So hopefully for ESPN, the series is wrapped up in six or less games because she wants Stephen A money. She wants money like somebody who's been in the game for 30, 40 years. Stephen A, Smith, Skip Bayless type money. And she's only been doing it for, you know, a fraction of that time. But, fine. If she can move the dial, she deserves it. But I don't think anybody watches this stuff to see Maria Taylor. Even though she's very good at what she does. I, I give her that. She's a very good. She, she played college basketball. So, it's not like she's just some chick up there, you know. Ditsy chick talking crap. She's a, was a college athlete at a very high level. I think she played at Georgia, college basketball at Georgia. Very high level of that of basketball. So she played, which is not a prerequisite to be a good analyst. However, she's got the beauty, because a lot of those those basketball chicks are not. <laughs> they're not much to look at. They're not peas into the eye so she has the beauty and she has the the brains the experience the know-how everything that comes with it so salute to her now Rachel Nichols being upset about that listen man I would be upset if anybody took like listen man 
I don't care how much woke crap I talked if I'm Rachel Nichols. It's now affecting me. That's human nature. Do I feel sorry for Rachel Nichols? Hell no. Am I happy this happened to her? Hell yes. But is what is her reaction to it racist? No. It's hypocritical. Everything got to be racist. There's so many words in the English language. Why the only two we know nowadays is racist and sexist? No, we know about five. Racist, sexist, homophobic. <laughs> A bunch of other phobias, but yeah. <laughs> We've really dumbed down the English language. There's so many things you could call Rachel Nichols other than a racist for her rant on about Maria Taylor. They said to me, hey, instead of hosting the NBA Finals, like, why don't you do Doris and Simon reporter job for the NBA Finals? Because guess what that would clear the way for? Uh, her and her whole For Maria to do the hosting for them, right? Yeah. So, I have declined. I don't know what their next move is, but they are feeling pressure because of all of that. And um, I'm trying to figure out, like, how to just, you know, my thing is, like, I, you know, I wish Marie Taylor all the success in the world. She covers football. She covers basketball. If you need or to give her more things to do because you're feeling pressure about your, like, crappy long-time record on diversity, which, by the way, I myself, like, know personally from the female side of it, like... Go for it. Just, you know, find it somewhere else. Like, you're not going to find it with me. Okay. So you're asking, who was Rachel Nichols speaking to in that viral video when she was complaining about Maria Taylor? Who was, who was she talking to? Well, she was speaking to Adam Mendelson. Now, who's Adam Mendelson? <laughs> He's LeBron James's spokesperson. And I know you're thinking, like, damn, there ain't no black firms that do <laughs> PR. Well, there are plenty of them. LeBron, only the best for him, though. <laughs> okay? He's got the best agent in the game, Rich Paul, who happens to be black. Even though it's his, his friend, he's still probably the best agent in the game right now. Not historically, but right now. Okay? He plays for one of the best franchises who's owned by, you know, Jeannie Buss, whose dad was one of the best owners. But now she's taking over, and so far, so good. She's a great owner. But only the best for LeBron. Regardless of race. LeBron don't care about race. If you're the best, black or white, he'll choose you. Because he's very shrewd. And he's, you know, he didn't get to where he was by choosing people based on their color. LeBron got to where he is by choosing people, based choosing things based on how good they were. He grew up in Akron. The best basketball program in Akron, St. Vin St. Mary's St. Vincent. Or St. Vincent St. Mary's, one of them, I don't know. But that school's 75% white. Even though the public schools that LeBron would have gone to would have been almost 100% black. He chose to go to the 75% white school. Because that was what would have was best for him. That's where he would have got the best support. Got to play a national schedule. Fly the games. Travel. Safe environment. Don't worry about. 
gangs and shootouts as after school and things like that. Great education. LeBron chooses, makes his decisions regardless of race. Race means nothing to LeBron when it comes to his personal life and his business life. Okay? So he chose Adam Mendelson to be his spokesperson. And that's the person Rachel Nichols was having a private conversation with that was secretly recorded by someone else. So I want you guys to just take that into consideration next time you hear LeBron James talk. Some wokeity woke crap. That wokeity woke crap is just for you. If LeBron James is about to make a hire, <laughs> if he needs a new dietitian, a new strength coach, a new personal assistant, a new lawyer, a place to send his son to school, he's going to choose what's best and not what's blackest. <laughs> 